So my request to all the Muslim brothers and sisters, you go back to the Quran. Study the Quran. Quran is the most positive book in the world. It's a proclamation to humanity. It's a fountain of mercy and wisdom. It's a warning to the heedless. It's a guide to the erring. It's an assurance to those in doubt. It's a solace to the suffering and a hope to those in despair. You can get all these benefits only if you read the Quran with understanding. If you don't know Arabic, read the translation of the Quran in the language you understand the best. Implement it, inshallah, it will be a guidance for you for your full life and you'll see your life change. Hope that answers the question. What happens to the Quran? Are we putting it on one side? Look at how shaitan comes to us. We have the most powerful gift. When you read and understand the Quran, you will shake. إِنَّمَا الْمُؤْمِنُونَ الَّذِينَ إِذَا ذُكِرَ اللَّهُ وَجِلَتْ قُلُوبُهُمْ وَإِذَا تُلِيَتْ عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتُهُ زَادَتْهُمْ إِيمَانًا The true believers are those whom when Allah is mentioned, they tremble. And when the verses of the Quran are recited, it increases their belief and conviction. And they are solidified. This is the Quran. But with us, we will read the Quran khatam after khatam after khatam. It hasn't moved us at all. We're still in the clubs. We're still in the casinos. We're still on drugs. We're trying to justify the use of weed. Astaghfirullah. And we're trying to justify everything else that it has no harm in it. And the Quran doesn't move us. Then someone shows us a small little piece of potato and we say, Subhanallah, for the first time, rather than all the verses of the Quran, which is the living He says in Surah Az-Zukhruf, he says, وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَنِ Listen, so you can understand where the problems come, where do they start from? He said, وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَنِ Anyone who neglects the word of Allah, ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَنِ here in Quran, anyone who neglects it, anyone who keeps it behind his back, anyone who turns away from it, يعني this could be a Muslim, it could be a non-Muslim, it could be anyone, anyone who thought himself too high from the Quran, could be the Muslim, the one that we say to him, read the Quran, ya akhi, it's got your solution for every problem. He says, I know, but give me something else. That same person is وَمَنْ يَعْشُ عَنْ ذِكْرِ الرَّحْمَنِ The one who decides not to hold on to this Quran. Uh, if you did not hold on to that, Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, نُقَيِّدْ لَهُ الشَّيْطَانِ فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينَ نُقَيِّدْ We're going to appoint a shaytan for him. And that shaytan is going to be لَهُ قَرِينَ He's going to be his best friend. نُقَيِّدْ لَهُ الشَّيْطَانِ فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِينَ He becomes his best friend. Then you need to understand, my brothers and sisters, there are two paths. Either the path of dhikr al-Rahman, the path of the Qur'an, and you choose to hold on to that for life, and you have a daily relationship with this Qur'an, and if not, the only other path that exists is the path of the shaytan, as Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in this ayah. If you abandon and neglect this, and had it behind your back, and gave it no importance and significance in your life, didn't try, didn't bother to read, didn't bother to memorize, you did not bother to ponder over it, you did not bother to learn how to read so you can start to read this Quran, then that means you abandon, you neglected what Allah Azza wa Jal says in the other part, and we're going to appoint a shaytan for him, فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِيرٌ And that shaytan will be his best friend. وَإِنَّهُمْ لَيَصُدُّونَهُمْ عَنِ السَّبِيلِ And that shaytan would keep misguiding him and diverting him from the correct path. And you know where the big worrying part is? This is the worrying part. وَيَحْسَبُونَ أَنَّهُمْ مُهْتَدُونَ And those same people would assume they're guided. And they would have this feeling that نحن we're on the right path. We're walking correctly. And this is the worst disaster and calamity that could ever happen to anyone. He is misguided and he reckons and he assumes that he is guided. How does he do that? Abandon the Quran. And that is exactly what the result is. Assalamu alaikum ladies and gentlemen, peace be upon you all. Uh, sorry for the delay. Uh, I was occupied with my kids, so I couldn't have the chance to be, and you know, I have to set up a lot of things before I start, right? Initially, I would have wanted to start on my correctional officer page, but uh, due to some inconveniences, I have to stick to Baba Shrike. 
So peace be upon you all and thank you all for coming. Uh, as you can see the title, we are here to decipher the mistranslated verses by the sectarians. Yeah. So peace be upon you all. Salam alaikum. Alaikum. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. So you're welcome. Thank you all for coming. Uh, <clears throat> I seek refuge with Allah against the accursed devil. And who is better in speech than one who invites to Allah and act righteous and says, Indeed, I am of the uh, Muslims. Huh? Says, Woman, Ahsan a call and mean man da ila lah who amila salih and wakala in the middle of Muslim. Hazi Sabili, I do ila la ala basirat in ana or many tabani was over ana lah who are my ana mina mushirki. This is my way I invite to God and la by perception. I and whoever follows me and glory be to Allah for I am not among the idolaters. Ya you are Lazina Amanu. Attaqullaha wa kunu ma aswadikin. Oh, you who believe, beware of God and be with those who are honest, that is, who are truthful. So today's topic is a, a continuation from what we left off from last week uh, concerning uh, deciphering the mistranslated verses by the sectarians. Salam. Uh, aha. So last week we checked chapter 3 verse 31 where they will quote the verse and it says the messenger says that is if you should love god then follow me so they mistranslate it and means follow the sunnah follow the hadith and whatever and again uh quran chapter 4 verse 59 where where it says ya you are lazina amanu then he says, Atiwu Allah wa Atiwu Rasul. Then he says, Wa Uli la Amiru Minkum. Then it goes for Intanazatun fi Shayin, right? So the sectarians will quote such a verse and then they mistranslate it again and they say, This is where it says you have to obey the ulama. You know, it's a lie, full of lies. It never, it never mentioned ulama in the verse. And neither does it say you should go and obey Sunnah or Hadith. No, it's a lie. Uh -huh. So this is why the scholars are scared to come for a live dialogue, right? Salam, Baba said Nagan Kabra said Naga Salam. Muntaza Ramatullah, Salam Alik, Dati Abdullah, Zahara, Sister Zahara, Wise G, Sharif Karim, Abdul Samad Adam, Abu Bakr Abdul Jalil. Uh, I see you all. Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you and thank you all once again for coming. Uh, so, uh, salam. Yeah, salam, Biggie. Good evening, bro. So, today we are going to continue from another route by checking chapter 4, verse 61, and chapter 4, verse 65, and hopefully chapter 4, verse 115, right? So, we are going to decipher these verses. We are going to undo what the sectarians always do. They lie, they twist the verses out of context and lie to you and say, this is what it says. The Sunnah explains, the Hadith explains, the Asbab nuzul they are all lies. Wallahi, wallahi, they are lying to you. And that is why I keep throwing the challenge. If they know they are up to the task, I'm available. Live dialogue, my platform is then I can give them the link, the invites come. Proof to the people, you know. Uh -huh. Yeah, Dominic Amponsa, thank you. Ablekuma, yes, nice. Uh, greetings, Ak Isaac, you're welcome. So I guess I can start the program because I started late. Uh, so we are going to deal with Quran chapter 4, verse 61. That is Surah to Nisa, chapter 4, verse 61. And usually the sectarians like to misquote this verse. Uh, I've done debates and dialogues whereby people will misquote such a verse and then to twist the narrative to make it suit their agenda. So always let a person base his conversation under a subject like you don't you don't start talking about football then you switch to go and talk about you know something else you stick to the subject then you can let people understand the subject right uh-huh so when they bring up a subject and uh, when they bring up a vex a verse sorry they leave the subject out and they leave the context out 
So then they will tell you, oh, this is what he says, and then this is where the prophet or the messenger explains the Quran. And with all due respect, that is all lies, right? So Quran chapter 4, verse 61, let me see if uh, this will permit me to share the screen on here. If it will allow me, then we see what the verse says. Uh, I'm trying to share the screen to see if it will allow me. If it's allowed, then thanks to God. Okay, it does allow me, right? So Quran chapter 4, verse 61, Sirat al-Nisa, where he says, وَإِذَا أَكِيلَ لَهُمْ تَعَالَهُ تَعَالَهُ إِلَى مَا أَنزَلَ اللَّهُ وَإِلَى الرَّسُولُ then he says, "Ra'ayt al-munafikina yasuduna anka, ah, anka sududa." So the verse says, uh, as you see the verse here. Uh, let me see if I can highlight it. As you see this verse here. Uh, let me see if I can increase this font size a bit. Yeah. Yes. So the verse says, and when it is said to them, come to what God has sent down, right? What God has sent down, which is clearly explained in Quran chapter 20, verse 2 to verse 3. It says, Ma yakhsha. So the Quran was the book which was sent down to the messenger, right? It was revealed. So when now God says, and when it is said to them, now that them, you have to highlight this word, the lahum, is, is denoting a particular people, type of people. And when you go above, it's referring to the hypocrites, right? So when it is said to them, come to what God has sent down or revealed, right? Then it says, end to the messenger. Now contextually, uh, somebody says, they can't hear me. Uh, Tun, Tunte, please check your side. Everybody can hear me. Please check your side, right? Check your side. Uh huh. Yeah, salam, uh, Sister Natalia. I see you. Salam. Mawia, Naganka, salam. Uh, Zach, Jim, you're welcome. Uh, Abubakar Mohammed, Tijan, you're welcome. Yes. Uh, uh, Tun. Tunteya, is it Tunteya? I don't know if it's a, a woman or a man. Please, you can go back and come uh, on so that it can be clear enough. Uh, Shahadi Idris, salam, you're welcome. Aha, uh -huh, so the verse I was just talking about is in Quran chapter 4, verse 61. So it says, and when it is said to them, you have to circulate the word them, right? You are underlining it. Lahum is talking about the hypocrites. So it says, come to what God has sent down. That is the Quran, right? And to the messenger, at that time, the messenger was alive, based on the context of the verses being read. He was alive at that time, right? So the hypocrites at his time were told to come to what God has revealed, which is the Quran, and to the messenger, because he was an entity who was alive at that time. So then God went ahead to, to say, Ra'aita. Ra'aita is talking to a second person pronoun, right? Which is the prophet, the messenger himself. So God says, Ra'aita. So God says, you see, or you will see, or you see which means he can see what is going on, right? Uh -huh. So sectarians will mistranslate this kind of verses, take it out of context, and twist the narrative altogether. So I'm helping you to decipher the mistranslated verses by the sectarians, right? So the verse clearly says, you, the messenger, you see the hypocrites turning away from you, Anka. Anka, you see, because he was alive at that time. We are not talking about this modern day and age, right? We can't go to him. He is not alive. You understand? So at the time when he was alive, when he tells the people, come to what God has revealed, that is the Quran and the messenger. Because remember, he was raised among the Umiyina to teach them the Al-Kitab and the Hikmah. So at that time, they were supposed to go to him because he was alive, right? Good. So now, God told the messenger, you see the hypocrites turning away from you in refusal because the, the hypocrites at his time, they don't want to come to him as an entity, the messenger, 
right? Uh -huh. Because he was the one who, re who received the Quran. Quran chapter 20, verse 2 to verse 3. We did not reveal the Quran to you in order to suffer or to distress. Illa yaksha, except to serve as a reminder for whoever fears. Right? That is whoever has the fear of God. That is what the Quran is to serve us, right? Uh -huh. So when it is said to them, these hypocrites, come to what God has sent down. You see, that's the Quran. And to the messenger, it's not talking about Sahih Bukhari. It's not talking about Sunnah. You'll be a fool to think he's talking about Sunnah or any uh, garbage book out there. Seriously. Base it on the context. Remember, the subject is talking about a particular thing, notion meaning coming to the Quran and to the messenger because he was an entity who existed in time, right? So then God told him, you see the hypocrite turning away from you, you, Anka, in the second person pronoun, in refusal. That is what the verse is. So, so and to understand this verse properly into context, then I'm going to decipher by helping with some particular verses in the Quran. Right? Salam, uh, Sayyid Adam. So, for instance, if I take you to Quran, uh, let's say Quran chapter 4, uh, no, Quran chapter 8, verse 20. I'm going to help you to understand when you are coming to the messenger, it doesn't mean you are coming to some something separate from God. Huh? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Magna Richmond, you're welcome. Uh -huh. When we say come to the messenger, it doesn't mean you are coming to something different, meaning he's going to give you Sahih Bukhari or his whims and desires or Sunnah, <laughs> nothing of that sort, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So I'm going to help you to understand what coming to the messenger actually entails. So I take you to Quran chapter 8, verse 20, right? Good. Quran chapter 8, verse 20. Then we see what that verse says. So I will share the screen. Then you get to see. Uh, what it takes to 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 come to the uh, the Quran, the God and the Messenger, right? So when we say obey God and obey the Messenger, you are not going to the Messenger to listen to something different. Whatever the Messenger will tell you also come from the Quran. It is not outside the Quran. So bear in mind, right? I'm going to help you to understand that. Hey, salam, salis, naganka, salam. Uh huh. So I take you to Quran. Chapter 8, verse 20. Right? Chapter 8, verse 20. Oh, wait. What happened here? Yeah. Then I'll share, I share the screen. Then we get to see what the verse says, right? Um, I think there's a bit lecture here. So I hope this doesn't affect me that much. Oh, uh, okay. I can share this one. Aha. Uh -huh. So Quran chapter eight verse twenty. It says, "Ya ayyuhal lazina amanun, atiu Allaha wa rasulahu." Right? Wa rasulahu. Then he says, "Wala tawallu anhu wa antum tasmaun." uh samuel tomb forget about that person it's not making sense let them find me for a live dialogue uh suwale abdurrahman you're welcome uh samuel tomb forget about that person i've already done a video i've explained that point i've given the evidences you can check on my wall from my previous videos i've given the answer concerning uh yawm al -Jum'a. it says yawm al -Jum'a, not salat al -Jum'a. I've already explained that. So forget about that. Uh -huh. So Quran chapter 8 verse 20 says, Then he says, Yes. So <clears throat> in this verse, what I want people to understand is, what I want people to understand is, God says, Oh, you who believe or who have believed, Obey God, that is Allah, and his messenger. Now here, remember, 
when he says obey God, he went ahead to say, and his, his messenger, meaning he's still talking about God. So you obey God and his messenger, because the messenger is his. He sent him with something to say to you, right? So then he says, and do not turn away from him. He didn't say do not turn away from them. He didn't mention two entities by saying do not turn away from them. He says, and do not turn away from him. You see how the, the grammar goes. The grammar says obey God and his messenger. He is a pronoun by saying his messenger. Then it goes and do not turn away from him. He didn't say from them. He's still talking about God. He started talking about God and he says his messenger and do not turn away from him. Not them. For anybody who had understand Arabic grammar. He says wala tawallaw anhu. He didn't say anhuma. If he says huma, there are two entities he's talking about. But he says, and who is still referring to God. Because whatever the messenger has to bring to you has to come from God. So God is taking the credit in this verse. Right? Uh -huh. So that is why Quran chapter 4 verse 80 says, Man yitu faqad ata Allah. Whoever obeys the messenger is obeying God. You see, that because whatever the messenger has to give you comes from God. So God is the main subject here, not anybody else. Uh -huh. So that is the first example. The second example, I'm going to take you to Quran chapter 8, verse 24. In the same chapter, Quran chapter 8, verse 24. So what I'll do is I'll share the screen then to break it down for you to understand how the Quran works. Mm? <laughs> yeah, Samuel Tum, you are right. All they care about is the, the to, to, to build a mosque. With the thousands, hundreds of thousands of mosques they already have, whilst people are lacking hospitals, educational uh, institutions for, do you understand, clinics, they are focused on building mosques as if God is homeless. <laughs> uh. <clears throat> yeah, the time will come, uh, Isaac, I mean, uh, God willing, inshallah, my... That, that time is coming. Don't worry. So I take you to Quran chapter 8 verse 24. And let's understand the duty of when God says obey God and obey the messenger. Right? Quran chapter 8 verse 24. I'm going to share the screen. Then we see what that verse says. Then I'll explain to you what it says. Right? So God says, Ya yo lazina amanu. Istajibu lillahi wali rasuli. Then he says, Iza da'akum. Ah? Lima you ye kum so the verse says ya you are lazina amanu estajibu lillahi estajibu lillahi wali rasuli then he says what iza da'akum lima yuhi kum so this verse is very interesting that is the part i want us to see actually the interesting part of this verse is it says, oh, you who believe or who have believed. Then it says, respond, respond. Estajibu uh, means to respond. So respond to God and to the messenger. Then it says, when he invites you. It didn't say when they invite you. For anybody who understands Arabic grammar, the word says, Iza da'akum. It didn't say da'awakum. Da like it didn't mention in a plural form. It didn't make the verb in a plural instance, right? Uh -huh. It made the verb in a singular instance. Da akum. You see how it goes. Uh -huh. So God says, oh, oh, you who believe, respond to God and to the messenger when he invites you to what gives you life. So it bases the subject of the verse on God. So when you went further in the verse, it says, and know that God switches between a man and his heart and that it is to him you will be assembled. So the subject of the verse is based on God. So somebody will say, why did he say respond to God and to the messenger? Because God didn't come down to speak to you. Neither did God carry the Quran on his head to deliver to the people. No, 
he sent a messenger. So the messenger is acting in by the command of God. Quran chapter 21, verse 27. Go and check. The messengers do not precede God in, in, in word. They act by his command. So they don't need to take the credit. The credit belongs to God. <clears throat> so that is one instance of the Quran, how unique the grammar of the Quran works, right? Uh -huh. So he says, oh, you who believe, respond to God and to the messenger when he invites you. He didn't say when they invite you. As to say, oh, the messenger has a different way to invite people and God also have a different. No, they are using the same book. The messenger has the book of God. It is through the book he will tell you exactly what he has been commanded. That is why God always tell him, yes, then God will tell him to say what? Kul. Then he will answer. Yes, when they ask you about the hour, then God will tell him what? Kul. Answer. Then yes, when they ask you about the spirit, then God will tell him Kul. Then he will give him the answer. So the messenger, his message is in the Quran that God has given to him, not outside the Quran. Only a fool think the messenger has a message outside the Quran to deliver. Good. So now we can see in Quran chapter 8 verse 24 clearly what God says that it has to do with the messenger inviting you to God. It is not about they, both of them are inviting you to something separate. No. So then again, I take you to Quran chapter 33 verse 36. Let's see what it says. Quran chapter 33 verse 36. Yeah, Quran chapter 33, verse 36. Then I'll share the screen and let's see what the verse says. Right? So concerning, we are deciphering what it says concerning how to obey the messenger, right? It is not about the messenger coming to tell you something different, right? It is always about telling you exactly what God has exalted him uh <clears throat> to say and that is the emphasis there so i will share the screen then you get to see what the verse says in the quran quran chapter 33 verse 36 that is surah al ahazab i share the screen then you see what uh the quran says concerning obeying the messenger oh what is this Yeah. <clears throat> so he says, Salam Musa Jalimila. So he says, Wama can a li muminan, muminin, wala muminatin. Then he says, Iza kada kada lahu wa rasulahu. Now, when you check in the verse, where he says, Wama can a li muminin, wala muminatin. Is a kada. Then he uses he use the word kada. Now this is a single type of verb. He says is a kada lahu wa rasulahu. It used a single type of verb, not a plural sense of verb. It's not talking about a plural form of a verb. This is a singular type of a verb. He used the word kada. Kada lahu. Then he says wa rasulahu. So the who at the end of rasulahu denotes God. So that is a domir, that is a masculine pronoun. So he says, it is not for a believing man nor a believing woman when God and his messenger have decided or issued, then he says, amran, amran, a command. So let me, let me help people to understand this verse better. Quran chapter 33, verse 36. Wama can a look meaning, huh? Limu meaning, wala mu minatin. Then he says, Isa kada lahu warasu lahu amran. You see, it is not for a believing man or a believing woman when God and his messenger uh, has issued a command, right? Now, when we bring it in English, you can decide to use the word have. But you are missing something from the Arabic grammar. 
because in the arabic grammar it used a single type of verb it didn't use a plural form of a verb it is a singular type of a verb Qada, right aha uh -huh. so here it is denoting that whatever the messenger has to issue as a command comes from god it's not coming from the messenger's own inclination and desires it has to come from god i hope i hope you're following my point here so quran chapter 33 verse 36 for those who understand the arabic grammar of the quran the word used there is a verb uh, it's a feel it says qada. this qada is a singular type of verb it's not used for plural form of people but when you check the verse when he says and when god and his messenger so he mentioned god then he says his messenger then he says has decided or issued a command like i said if you bring it in english you can decide to say have issued a command because it's two entities but when you stand to the arabic grammar of the quran it's not referring to two entities but one entity because it's god and his messenger because god has to give you a message from through his messenger so it's a one message it's not two messages separate no okay so that is quran chapter 33 verse 36 right now the next one will be in quran chapter chapter 4 verse 80 right quran chapter 4 verse 80 and i will help you to understand this notion or this part I'm, I'm i'm breaking down right so quran chapter 4 verse 80 let's see what it says i will share the screen then we get to see the verse what the verse is talking about quran chapter 4 surah to nisa verse 80. Yeah, thank you very much, uh, Abdul Jalil. I appreciate that. Yes. Hey, Salam, Anyas Muti, you're welcome. Uh, Aminu, Amin Lion, yes, Allah, Ibiya, Allah, Taimaka. Yeah. Aha, uh -huh. so <clears throat> now I take you to Quran chapter 4, verse 80 to un understand that. The words coming from the messenger is not a separate message. That's why we are talking about the messenger. Huh? So the verse says, "Man yuti rasula faqad ata Allah, wa man tawalla fama arsal naka alayhim hafiza." You see the verse. "Man yuti rasula faqad ata Allah," because the messenger has been given a message to bring to us. Quran chapter five verse sixty-seven. He says, Ya ayyuwa rasul, ballig ma unzila ilayka min rabbik, wa illam tafalu, fama ballakta risalatahu, wallahu yasimuka min al nas, inna Allah la ya dil kaumila kafiri. Right? Quran chapter 5, the 67. He says, O oh, you, the messenger, deliver what has been revealed to you from your Lord. And if you do not, then you have not delivered his messages, and God will safeguard you from the people. Indeed, God does not guide the disbelieving people. That is Quran chapter 5, verse 67. So when you come back to Quran chapter 4, verse 80, as shown on the screen, God says, Man rasula ata Allah. Whoever obeys the messenger, he didn't say the prophet, you will be a fool to change the word rasul to become a prophet. You are not smarter than God. If God wanted to say, Man nabiya, he could have said it. Right? But instead, he says, Man rasula ata Allah. Whoever obeys the messenger is obeying God. Because if God has sent a messenger to tell you A, B, C, and he came to tell you A, B, C, D, when you obey, you are obeying God automatically. Because the messenger is not using his own whims and desires to tell you that message. That's why he's called the messenger. He's been sent to deliver a message. So he will not come leaving the message of God aside and come and tell you Sahih Bukhari or some garbages. No. So the verse is, Man rasula faqad ata Allah. Then he says, Wa man tawalla, and whoever should turn away. Then he says, Fama arsal naka alayhim hafiza. Then we have not sent you to be a guardian over them. Do you see? God never sent Muhammad as a messenger to become a guardian over the people. You see? Aha. Uh -huh. So that is Quran chapter 4, verse 80. Whoever obeys the messenger is then he has obeyed God. 
because God gave him the message to bring to us. So that is the Quran. If you take the Quran and you bring the messages in the Quran, because the messenger, he brought the message. Quran chapter 5, verse 67. He brought the message. You see how simple it is. So when you obey the Quran, you are obeying God because the words of the Quran belongs to God, not to Muhammad. The Quran is not for Muhammad. It's for God. Now, so to, to finish with that aspect of the verse, I take you to Quran chapter 4, verse 14 to show you something interesting. That whatever thing, each commands God gives is from God, not from the messenger. It is the messenger just what? Repeating what God has told him to tell us. As simple as it is, right? So I take you to Quran, the same chapter, chapter 4. Then I take you to verse 14 to see what it says, right? Uh-huh. Quran chapter 4, verse 14. Then I, I can share the screen. Let's see what the verse says, right? Quran chapter 4, verse 14. So now God says, remember, Quran chapter 4, verse 80 says, Man rasula ata Allah. Whoever obeys the messenger, then he has obeyed God, right? So now Quran chapter 4, verse 14. See the interesting thing that God is stating to us here in this verse, right? So God went ahead by telling us in that verse. It says, Waman ya'asillaha wa rasulahu. Huh? Then he says what? Wa yata'adda hududahu. Then he says, Yudhilu naran khalidan fiha wa lahu azabun muheen. You see what the verse says? The verse says, and whoever disobeys God and his messenger. Because God is not talking to you direct. He has to talk to you through a messenger. And the messenger is the one who brought you the Quran, the book. So whoever disobeys God and his messenger, that is why the messenger has a, pro, uh, a pronoun, the Damir, it says Rasulahu. You understand? So whoever disobeys God, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Muhammad uh, Qaddafi, uh, Tujis, I see you, and whoever disobeys God and his messenger and trespasses his limit. It didn't say their limits. The verse is man wa man yasillaha wa rasulahu wa yata'adda hududahu. It didn't say hududahu ma. Do you see? The limits and the standard are set by God, not the messenger. When God sets the limits, then he gives it to the messenger to bring it to the people. The messenger cannot set any standard or limit for you unless God has authorized him. So he's not here to tell you his whims and desires as some foolish people will say he brought you Sahih Bukhari or some garbages to follow. He never gave anybody any book aside the Quran. So whoever disobeys God and his messenger and trespasses his limits, not their limits, it is God's limits we are abiding by. It is not somebody's limits. The religion is for God. Islam is for God. The Quran is for God. It's not for Muhammad. <laughs> the Quran is neither for the Arabs. The word Araba, it means to express, to make something clear. That is why the Quran is an Arabic language. It doesn't necessarily mean it belongs to any Arabian country on earth. Wallahi, no Arabian country on earth can claim the Quranic dialect of Arabic language belongs to them. No, not even Saudi Arabia can claim that. Do you get the point? Aha. Uh -huh. And whoever disobeys God and his messenger and trespasses his limits, he will admit and he will be admitted into fire eternally therein, and he will have a humiliating punishment. Do you see? Aha. Uh -huh. Salak, uh, Salam Sheikh uh, Rahman Tijani. Yeah, thank you. Anyas Mufti. Thank you very much. Aha. Uh -huh. So do you see what the verse is? So he says. And whoever disobeys God and his messenger and trespasses his limits, not their limits, he will have said, Hududahuma, meaning God has to set a limit. And then the messenger himself also has to set a limit by his own whims and desires. But it doesn't work that way. 
It is by the command of God the messengers act. Quran chapter 21, verse 27. Quran chapter 21, verse 27. All the messengers, they act by the command of God. Good. So now we have seen it clearly, right? So this is one of the reasons why God told the prophet clearly. He told the prophet and the messenger clearly concerning which hadith will the people believe after God and his verses. Quran chapter 45, verse 6. He says, Tilka ayatu lahi natuluha alayka bilhaq. Then he says, For bi ayi hadith ibad Allahi wa ayatihi yuminun. Because God is the one who sets the limits and the standard. The messenger can only deliver the words of God to you. So God says, Tilka ayatu lahi natuluha alayka bilhaq. These are the verses of God which we recite to you in truth. Let me share the screen so that people can get to see what the verse says. Huh? It's just as simple as it is. The sectarians will keep duping you with lies, lying to you day in, day out, just to get your, 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 your few coins and put in their pocket. Yeah, Sharif Karim says, exactly. We have been duped. Yes, we have been duped. Huh? Let me put your message on the screen. You see, we have been duped to think that the worst of the messenger comes from the so-called hadith. Yes, we have been duped for centuries. We have been lied to. Whilst the worst of the messenger can be found in the Quran. And I keep saying, let the scholars find me for a live dialogue. Let them stop wasting their time saying they are typing on some gibberish on some walls. I'm available. My phone number is available. Why are they scared to call and arrange a dialogue with me? I'm here. If you claim I'm lying to the people, inbox me. I bring you on live. I, I would love to be embarrassed. I'm waiting. <laughs> and let's see who has something to lose. Uh huh. Yeah. And 2G says what? He says, we are here to listen to wisdom. If you don't agree, bring up your proof. If not, then stop typing arguments and listing perhaps god might have mercy on you to guide inshallah yes that's the point so as i quoted quran chapter 45 verse 6 it says these are the verses of god which we recite to you muhammad in truth so in which hadith or in what hadith after god and his verses uh, in which one again after God and his ayat, will they believe? So God has given the messenger the best hadith, Ahsan al-Hadith, Quran chapter 39, verse 23. You see, uh -huh. Samuel Chum says, I'm a Muslim Zabrama, but truly one of one of father's first sunnah on us. Yes, that is the problem. They will force it on you because they are the ones giving you the chop money. So when they you don't you don't do as they say, they will not give you chalk money. But when you become independent, you can think for yourself, you can reason for yourself. Because on the day of judgment, Quran chapter 17, verse 13 to 14, Kefa binafsi kayoma aleka hasiba. Your soul is sufficient as a recon over you. So you are on your own. Right? Quran chapter 80, verse 33 downwards. You are you everybody will be on his own on the day of judgment. Quran chapter 2, verse 48. Nobody can intercede for you on that day, on the day of judgment. So why waste your time following somebody's opinions when you can investigate and find the truth? So Quran chapter 17, verse 36, it says, Do not pursue that of which you have no knowledge about. You see? Aha. Uh -huh. So somebody says what? Is it in the Quran that one has to perform ablution before touching the Quran? No, it is not in the Quran. God never instructed that. The only time you have to pe perform the ghusl, the ablution, the washing, is when you are approaching the salat. Quran chapter 5 verse 6 and Quran chapter 4 verse 43. That is the only time you need to pe perform the ablution, uh, the ghusl, to approach the salat. That is it. That's the only command. Right? Mm -hmm. So now, we have finished deciphering Quran chapter 4 verse 61. As I told you, right? And when it is said to them, come to God, come to, come to what God has revealed or sent down and to the messenger, 
you see the hypocrites turning away from you in what in refusal you see uh-huh so that one is done so the next one we are going to talk about quran chapter 4 verse 65 the sectarians like to misquote this verse a lot they lie to people a lot to give credit uh, credence to the prophet more than god remember the sectarian it's always relate to the prophet more than God. If you insult God, they don't say anything. If you like, say anything abusive to the prophet and see. They will give you sleepless night. But you insult God, oh, they don't care. Aha. Uh -huh. You see? Yeah. So Nana Kofi says what? Let me see. He says they they won because they fear whenever you ask them certain question then they tell you to learn the hadith before how can the hadith interpret the quran it doesn't make sense exactly it doesn't make sense if you ask them the hadith and the quran which one is more difficult to understand they will tell you the hadith look the, the hadith they have signs of hadith is not uh mutawatir whatever garbage is they keep telling you to go and learn huh? by the time you finish learning the hadith you are dead <laughs> you told us hmm, the hadith explains the quran and yet hadith is more difficult than the quran are you in your right senses how how does it make sense hmm? <clears throat> yeah thank you very much uh, nana kufi okay so let's move on uh johnson james i just give the reference chapter 5 verse 6 are you are you using your common sense all right somebody asked a question i gave the reference chapter 5 verse 6 go and check the evolution is there and you are talking about what if you are not following hadith what where is the hadith there quran chapter 5 verse 6 like these are some of the so-called scholars who disguise themselves change their names put some foreign names foreign picture and disguise themselves to ask stupid questions somebody already asked me a question chapter 5 verse 6 chapter 4 verse 43 i gave the answer concerning evolution now look at what something is somebody's writing look with a fake profile look he says now you mentioned evolution could you please be honest to yourself and tell us how you perform evolution and how quran tells you to perform evolution and see if you also are not following hadith <laughs> Although I don't waste my time for stupid questions. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> Samuel Toom said the part that says, Prophet married six years girl. I feel shy for myself being. No, no, no. It doesn't say in the Quran. There is nothing like Prophet married six years old girl in the Quran. It doesn't exist. God asked us to marry women, He didn't ask us to marry kids. It is the enemies of Islam who are bringing all those garbages. Remember, Quran chapter 6, verse 112 to 113 already gave us the prophecy of whatever is happening. Every prophet had enemies. And these enemies, they decorate their decorative speech. Mm? They inspire each other the decoration of uh, what? Lies. In order to deceive people. Uh -huh. Only those weak-minded people will, up, will uphold such narrations and take it up as uh, part of their deen. Right? Uh -huh. So let's go to Quran chapter 4, verse 65. And I'm going to decipher this part so that we understand uh, what God says concerning how the sectarians are lying about the verses. So Quran chapter 4, verse 65, it says, <laughs> Then he says, Then he says, Taslima. Do you see the verse? That is Quran chapter 4, verse 65. And the sectarians always like to quote this verse. They are scholars and they lie to you. They twist the verses out of context and lie to you. They leave the subject out and they leave context out. And then they will say, you see here, they say, if you don't know, make the prophet a judge. If you don't come and follow the sunnah, if you don't come and follow the garbage hadith to judge for you, wallahi, you are not a believer. Is that what the Quran says? Or you are foolishly, foolishly or ignorantly putting your own words there? 
Because Quran chapter 10, verse 82, listen what he says. He says, And God will enforce the truth with his words, even if the criminals dislike it. This is what God says in Quran chapter 10, verse 82. So now we are going to allow God to enforce the truth with his own book, that is the Quran, with his own words. We don't need any garbage scholar's opinion. Or neither do we need any garbage book to come and tell us otherwise. So let's check to the Quran and see what God says concerning uh, the prophet being made to judge. Right? Right? Uh-huh. So Quran chapter 4 verse 65, he says, فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوا كَفِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجْلُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ هَرَجًا مِمَّا قَدَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا So the verse is, but no, by your Lord, they do not believe until they make you judge. Remember, the context of the verse started from 61. It's talking about the hypocrites. Then it went from 61 downwards to 65. So anybody who has the Quran next to you, write it down and check it for yourself. Right? Uh -huh. So then God says, but no, by your Lord, they do not believe. Who are the they? Underline it. Check the context. It's talking about the hypocrites. So the hypocrites, they do not believe until they make you judge. Because when they ask, when God asks them to come to what God has revealed and to the messenger, because the messenger has to use a book to judge the people. That is the Quran. And I'm going to show you the evidences. He has to use the Quran to judge the people. He has to use the book of God to judge the people. So when they tell the hypocrites to come to what, the, the, what God has revealed, which is the Quran, and to the messenger, then they turn away in refusal because they don't want the messenger to be to judge them with the Quran. Do you see the point here? So, but no, by your Lord, they do not believe until they make you judge in whatever they dispute among themselves and should find no difficulty within themselves from what you have decided, you the messenger have decided. And to submit with submission, meaning after the messenger have judged, decided from the Quran, then they have to submit to the judgment. So now what is the messenger supposed to use? Is he supposed to use the sunnah? Is he supposed to use the garbage hadith to judge? No, 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 no. We don't need that. Put that in the trash. We have something better and genuine from boutique. Expensive. Nice one from the Quran. We don't need any garbage. Ubruni wawu to come and judge for us. Right? Good. So now, I'm going to help you to understand uh, the verse. Right? So I just quoted chapter 4, verse 65. Now, the next verse I'm going to take you is chapter 13, verse 37, so that we see where the judgment given to the messenger, where can we find it? Is it in the book of God or is it outside the book of God, as the so-called hypocritical scholars out there are claiming? I'm going to give you the answer. Quran chapter 13, verse 37, then I will share the screen, then we see what God says concerning where the judgment of God can be found, right? Aha. Uh -huh. So that is why Muhammad, as a messenger, was asked to judge the people using the book of god so i'm going to show you the evidences mm -hmm. nana kofi before i go on let me address this point made by nana kofi right so that he see something is wrong here nana kofi says I really love to learn the Quran, but my only fear is that some verses seem to be violent. Violent. He wants to say violent. Yeah. The Quran says, flog your child at age, at, at age what? Maybe he wants to say at a little age, age what? Age seven? To pray. The Quran never, never ask anybody to flog, to flog their children, to pray. It doesn't, it doesn't exist. There's no single verse. Then he says, and also the fornicator should be flogged 100 each. It has a context. Quran chapter 24, verse 2 downwards. It has a context, right? And the reason why that should happen, right? You have to find, what, four witnesses. And it, it, it's not never easy. It's never easy. Find four witnesses who witness that such act has happened, right? It's just like every country has the rule. When something is done, how they can punish you. Some countries can send you life to prison based on the crime you have committed. Some countries can jail you for 10 years. So every uh, like 
uh, how will I say, country has its own rule. So this rule is how to govern people's conduct, not to have corrupt morality among people. So the Quran says, he says, uh, should flock fornicators. Uh huh. Okay. And he says, I believe Allah is loving and he forgives our sins. So how come this violence in, in the Quran? First of all, that is not violence. The act of punishment is allowed in every institution or every organization or every part of the world. Act of punishment is allowed. Right? If somebody does evil, he needs to be punished. That's why we have criminal justice courts where somebody does a crime, he needs to be ju judged. Not everybody will be in favor of the judgment. You see how it works. So yours is just to understand the context of what you are being told, but that is not classified as violence. So understand that. Okay, let's move on. Uh, David Ismail says, how can I get one of the Quran in Ghana? Yes, I'm working towards it. I'll work towards the production in Ghana as well. Uh, let's see what happens. I'll keep you updated. However it goes, inshallah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Musa Jabila, he says, ask question from your brain, not your mouth. Exactly. I like that, that statement. Yes. Okay, let, let me move on, right? Let me move on with my uh, topic so that I don't go outside my lane right uh -huh. so i'm going to share the screen then we see where the messenger is supposed to use the judgment from is he supposed to use uh sunnah sahih bukhari books what is the messenger supposed to use and i'm going to show you the evidence it's as simple as a b c d but the mushriks will keep disturbing you with lies and hearsays right uh -huh. so quran chapter 13 verse 37 god said to the messenger then he says what? Then he says what? You see what the verse says. God says, and thus have we revealed it as an Arabic judgment. Now, when we say Arabian, it comes from the word Araba, which is to express something, to make some, to declare something, to make something clear, right? So that's how we revealed it as an Arabic judgment, meaning something to express, to make it clear as a judgment. And if you should follow their inclinations after what has come to you, Jaka, we can see a second person pronoun. Jaka signifies you, the prophet you the messenger of the knowledge because the quran possesses knowledge quran chapter 7 verse 52 ah uh, look at the jina uh, uh if i remember look at the jina hum bi kitab and fassalnahu ala ilm hudan wa rahmatan uh li qawmi yuminun right so that is quran chapter 7 verse 52 so god says and thus have we revealed it as an arabic judgment and if you should follow their inclinations after what has come to you of the knowledge, you will have no guardian nor protector against God. So this is what the messenger was told. Right? Aha. Uh -huh. Nazir NSC says, what is Muhammad's surname according to the Quran? It doesn't exist in the Quran. And the Quran is not based on Muhammad himself. It is about God, not Muhammad. So his surname cannot be found in the Quran. And it has no, it's a, it is of no use for the guidance we need and salvation. Yeah. Good. So similar goes with the issue of Adam. What is the Adam's sending? It's of no use. What is Maryam's Mary's sending? It is of no use. We keep we can keep going like that. It is of no use, right? Uh -huh. So Nazir, that question, we don't need to know the surname for anything. Unless people who want to delve in deeper. For his background that's up to them but that is not based on the uh, salvation uh -huh. so we see quran chapter 13 verse 37 and god says we have revealed it as an arabic judgment so god revealed the quran to him with the judgment inside right so i'm going further to break down and show you the verses where it talks about the quran the book be, uh, being able to be served as a book of judgment so that is what the messenger was supposed to use to judge the people. Bukhari, not any sunnah. 
no you don't need that that is not from god right so i share the screen again we go to quran chapter 4 verse 105 then we get our answer concerning which book the messenger was supposed to use to judge the people so quran chapter 4 verse 105 surah to nisa clearly says clearly you can see what it says in that uh, verse concerning the book god says inna anzalna ilayka alkitab bil haqq then he says liyahkuma liyahkuma bayna nas bima araka allah now what people don't usually pay attention is they think the prophet or the messenger was supposed to use his whims and desires and opinions to judge the people that is not the case remember the deen the religion is for god uh, in the dinner in the lail islam quran chapter 3 verse 19 and the same god sent this messenger with the religion of truth quran chapter 61 verse 9 who allazi he is the one who has sent his messenger with the religion of truth, uh, with the guidance and the religion of truth. Bil huda wa din al haq, right? So now God gave him something to be able to use for judgment to the people concerning the deen. Because remember, Quran chapter 5, verse 3, God has completed the deen. So Quran chapter 4, verse 105, God says, Inna anzalna ilayka al kitaba bil haq. Then he says, Litakuma Baina Nas Bima Arakallah. Then he says, Wala takun Lil Hai Inina Hasima. Yes, Hajj Azbat Sultan says, How do you perform ablution? I, I have the link, I will send you the link so that you can watch the video. It's a short video. But it is found in Quran chapter 5, verse 6. Surah Al uh, Ma'idah. Quran chapter 5, verse 6. You see it there, the instructions on how to make the ablution. Any, anyways, Quran chapter uh, 4, verse 105. It clearly tells us that God revealed the book. Huh? Indeed, we have revealed the book to you, that is Muhammad, in truth or with the truth. Then he says, what? So that you, you, may judge between the people by what god has shown you so you can see god has shown him the book he revealed something to him a revelation he has the quran was revealed to him by revelation and inspiration right he received the quran by revelation and inspiration quran chapter 76 verse 23 quran chapter 6 verse 19 he received it as an inspiration and revelation right so god says indeed we have revealed a book to you in truth so that you may judge between the people by what god has shown you so god has shown him the revelation and an inspiration of the book and he has it so when he has to judge the people he has to use what god has revealed to him not his whims and desires and god says and do not be an adversary for the traitors you see so if he has to judge between the people, he has to use the book of God. So that is why God says, we have revealed the book to you in truth, so that you may judge between the people by what God has shown you, not by your own opinion, not by your sunnah, not by your desires, not by the Sahih Bukhari, not by a Sahih Muslim, any garbage out there, no, by what God has shown you. And that is the Quran. Again, Take you to Quran chapter 5, verse 48. Let's see which book was given to the messenger to be used for judgment. Was it Sahih Bukhari? Was it Sunnah? Are you sure? No. That is not the book given to him to judge the people. So I'm going to share the screen again. Then we get to see what the verse says. Yeah, so Quran chapter 5, verse 48. So God says, Wa anzalna ilayka al kitaba bil haq, musaddikan lima bayna yadayhi. 
min al kitab then he says wa muhayminan alayhi and now god told him fa kum bainahum bima anzala allah do you see the verse what it says then he says wala tattabi ahwahum amma jaaka min al haqq you see the part of the verse aha uh -huh. so that is quran chapter 5 verse 48 and similar thing was uh, uh, repeated in verse 49 but first of all let's check what 48 says salim can i call a please salim can i call a salim can i call kabar kuwa ka jai Aha so Quran chapter 5 verse 48 he says wa anzalna ilayka alkitaba and we have revealed to you the book bil haqq in truth or with the truth musaddiqan lima bayna yadayhi ah to serve as a confirmation to what was before it or for what is was before it min alkitab of the alkitab of the book wa muhayminan alayhi superseding over it or dominating dominating over it Then he says fa'kum bainahum bima anzala Allah so judge between them by what God has revealed or what God has sent down God sent the Quran down to him he revealed it to him so God now asked him to use that book the same al-kitab what God has revealed the Quran to judge the people that is the book of God you see he has to use the book of God to judge between them the people then god says and do not follow the inclinations after their inclinations after what has come to you of the truth because the quran is the al haq is the truth from god quran chapter 2 verse 147 quran chapter 3 verse 60 quran is the truth quran chapter 43 verse 78 right quran chapter 18 verse 29 the quran is the truth You see so he has to use the book of God to judge between the people as simple as it and similarly it is repeated in Quran chapter 5 verse 49 he has to use the book of God which was revealed to him to judge between the people and nothing else not sahih bukhari not sahih muslim not any sunnah don't let the scholars lie to you please aha uh -huh. so now we have seen the verses ah uh, Quran chapter 13 verse 37 the God revealed the Arabic judgment Quran chapter 4 verse 105 God revealed the book so that Muhammad would use that to judge the people Quran chapter 5 verse 48 he has to use the book to judge the people Quran chapter 5 verse 49 he has to use the same book to judge the between the people so now to simplify this issue i take you to Quran chapter 6 verse 114 then we can end the argument once and for all So don't let any scholar lie to you and say the prophet was asked to use his opinion or to use sunnah or to use sahih bukhari to judge you it's a lie wallahi it's a lie aha uh -huh. so i'm going to help you quran chapter 6 verse 114 surah al-an'am 114 then what i do i share the screen as usual then we get to see what the verse says in quran chapter 6 verse 100 and what here 114 yeah so the verse is afa ghayr allah abtagi hakaman wa huwa allazi anzala ilaykum alkitaba mufassala wal ladhina ataynahum alkitaba ya'lamuna annahu munazzalu min rabbika bil haqq then he says fala takunna min al mumtari do you see what the verse is yeah uh somebody is asking a question eh salam liman imran ana gan ka salam uh somebody is asking a question that is ak ah uh, that is isaac amen he says could you please explain quran chapter 19 verse 33 Isa alayhi salam is he coming back again or not no he's not coming back i did a lecture on this i have the video i think in my uh two previous lectures 
so when i finish this video i'll send you the link under this comment section then you you get to watch that part right it's not coming back so i will show you the video then you can uh check for yourself anyways quran chapter 6 verse 114 it clearly tells us that afa gairu lahi habta gi hakaman wa huwa allazi anzala ilaykum alkitab mufassala shall i seek other than god as a judge when we say hakama someone who has to judge right someone who has to judge for you so he says shall i seek other than god as a judge shall i desire other than god as a judge while he is the one who has revealed to you the book explained in detail or elaborated in detail then he says, "Wallazina ata ina humul kitaba." As for those who have been given the book, ah, huh? that's uh, God has given them the book. We have given the al kitab. Ya alamuna anna hu munazalu mi Rabbi kabil hak. They know that it has been revealed from your Lord with the truth or in truth. Then God says, "Fala takun na na min al muntarin." So do not be of the doubters or among the doubters. You see, so Quran chapter six verse 114 simplifies this issue i don't need to go and seek a judge other than god and if the messenger has to judge for you he has to judge through the quran by using the book of god not something else it's as simple as it is uh simon kweku waja says he says baba please is the 30 days fasting must a must in the quran it doesn't say 30 days however it says you should you should do the abstinence within the month uh month of ramadan quran chapter 2 verse 185 but it is for a limited number of days quran chapter 2 verse 184 uh, a limited number of days or few number of days not everybody will get the chance to do the whole month right uh -huh. so god never said it's a fixed number that you have to do no it doesn't say that it's only a few or limited number of days. Some people might be sick, some people might be traveling, and some people might not have the capacity to do it because of the weather and, and other stuff. So they have to ransom by feeding the poor person. Quran chapter 2, verse 184. I have a full lecture on that, and I'll be putting it up for people to watch again. I'll play it as a live program again so people can watch later on, right? Before Ramadan or during Ramadan, inshallah. Now, so we have already seen Quran chapter 6, verse 114. I've broken that down and we have seen the difference. Quran chapter 4, verse 61, it is not telling you to come to the Quran and to the Sunnah. No. Quran chapter 4, verse 65. It's not telling you to make the prophet Adis or Sunnah as your judge. He has been asked to use the Quran as the judgment, the book of God as the, for the judgment. So nothing else. You are welcome, Ak Isaac. I mean, aha. Uh -huh. So then, uh, somebody is asking, Vora Vora says, Baba, is it true that you can pay someone to fast for you? No, it doesn't exist in the Quran. No, where did God ask such? No intercession. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> Vora Vora, that is not from God. Mm? Uh huh. God never asked you to pay somebody to fast for you. <laughs> Then the rich people in the world will only be paying people to fast for them. You will never fast. Okay, let's move on. Uh, so uh, now, the interesting one I'm going to, before I drop the topic for now, the last one I'm going to address before I drop the topic for now, is in Quran chapter 5, verse 3 to verse 4. The sectarians like, like to quote this verse a lot. And they lie to the people and say that, oh, you know what? The, the, the Muhammad does not speak from inclination. The prophet never speaks from his, his own desires. He only speaks what he has been inspired. Oh, is that so? Is that so? Uh, this mushriks, is that so? It's a lie. Hmm? You understand? Exactly, Vora Vora. The distortions are too many. People have distorted a lot of things from the Quran. So now I'm going to Quran chapter 53, right? Quran chapter 53, 
Oh no 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 no. Let me let me leave this one for for the next week because my time and I also have to give ch chance for callers to call. My time is limited and I have to right. It's getting late here. I have to go for my salad time. So what I will do is I will leave the chapter fifty three verse three to verse four for next week, and also I will be heading to chapter four verse one hundred and fifteen for next week, and then Quran chapter sixteen verse forty three to thirty four. So these are the verses. He says. I will be addressing this one. Then the next one is what we see. Once a night, like a zikr, a little by you, and in us, manu zile ilayhim, while Allahum yetafakarun. I'll be addressing this one. And then I'll be going to uh, chapter 4, verse 115, and I'll be deciphering this one as well. Uh huh. So, ladies and gentlemen, like I said, I'll be opening the phone, phone line so that people can call. Uh, let me put the phone numbers and also uh, let me see put the banner here I put the banner here for the phone phone line here and then I put my YouTube channel for those who don't know my YouTube channel it is there right aha uh -huh. and plus let me see I have Yeah, I'm organ also organizing uh, a charity feeding program for the old people. I have the link above on my page. Yeah. Yes, I have the link above on my page. And as well as there's a feeding program also ongoing in South Africa hosted by uh, brother Isa Watson and uh, let me let me see I can put the the details up here so that people can help with the feeding especially during the month of Ramadan so that we can help feed the needy as well so I'll put the details I think uh yes he told me they have issues with the I think the card payments on their website but however I'll put it just in case but then if you want to be able to send something through uh moneygram to brother isa watson you can do that he's in the comments comment section let me put his name up here uh that is isa watson here yes that's brother isa watson peace be upon you they do a feed feeding program in south africa where they organize uh a feeding program for the people where they give people food they cook for the people you see ah they help the needy the poor to get something to eat so i put the link also up here so that anybody who we able to donate also can donate on there whilst i'm organizing another one in ghana that is for old people old aged people that is for gofundme when you check on my page you see it above and whatever happens if the donation goes as planned right on my way on my section i can be able to give some part of the money to isa watson's uh you know feeding program in south africa then they can also continue on as we did before last i think last year so what happens is please let's help the poor and the needy let's feed them and then they can also get the benefit of what we have uh, acquired and attained right uh-huh uh, there is two hours difference with ghana at the moment and i think during the summer time it will be changing to three hours it, here they change the clock right uh-huh so somebody says what so if you check on the description the bio section up my page this video live video if you check up there you see the details for the donation to south africa you see the link and the donation concerning my gofundme page concerning the feeding program in ghana which will be done in my hometown in accra that is also there 
right? So whichever you do, yes, we will link up and I'll try to donate to Isa Watson as well, inshallah. So you check. Uh -huh. So ladies and gentlemen, concerning what I've spoken about or based on the Quran, if you have any questions, the phone number is below the page, right? The phone number is available. You can do a WhatsApp call. You call me and you ask your question and before I drop the program, right? Uh, let me see. Somebody wrote a question. Let me see what he said. Uh, let me see. He says, do Muslims have special clothes to wear? No, there is no. Muhammad, Muhammad Gaddafi is asking a question. He says, do Muslims have special clothes to wear? There's nothing special. Your adornment, you can wear your adornment to go to any kind of masjid or any place. There's nothing like a special wear. If you go to Quran chapter 7, verse 31, right? Quran chapter 7, verse 31. And Quran chapter 7, verse 26 to 27. God says, Walibas well, taqwa is the best. Mm? You have to wear the best clothing for the piousness. And also you can wear your adornment. If you have your necklace, anything you want to wear as an adornment. So far as it doesn't contain idol worship shirk, you understand? But adornment is allowed. Let me see. Yeah, adornment is allowed. You can wear your adornment, dress nicely. For the women, I think in Quran chapter 33, verse 59, God instructed the prophet to tell his wives and his uh, daughters and then the wives of the believers to wear what? A, a robe, jalabi bihinna. That is a long uh, dress to cover themselves up, right? Mm -hmm. So ladies and gentlemen, the phone line is open. I only have a few minutes to drop. You can call me via WhatsApp call. That is the phone number down there. If you have any question, bring it on before I leave, right? Or you can just type it down there, right? Just type it down there. I will uh, give the response. Sharif Karim says, can you explain verse 2847, Quran chapter 28, Verse 47 is talking about following uh, the verses which the messengers bring. Huh? So Quran chapter 28 verse 47 says, in that verse it says, wa an tusibahum musibatun bima kaddamat aidihim. Hmm? Then he says, fayakulu rabbana lawla ar uh, Arsalat Ilayna Rasulan Fanatabia Ayatika. Then he says, Wanakuna Minal Mumini. Then God says, If not, that a misfortune should strike them for what their hands have sent forth, then they will say, hmm? They will say, Our Lord. Why do you not send to us a messenger and so that we may follow your verses in order to become of the what? Believers. So that we may be among the believers. That is Quran chapter 28 verse 47. When messengers come to us, they come to us in order for us to follow the verses of God. They don't come to us for us to go and follow their sunnah or anything else. Messengers come so that we follow the verses of God, right? Uh -huh. So this is what people will say when a misfortune strikes them. When they don't follow the verses of God, they will now tell God, why don't you send a messenger so that we may follow your verses? Because messengers bring you the verses of God, not something else. You see, so that is the explanation concerning Quran chapter 28, verse 47. So ladies and gentlemen, I have a few minutes to drop. If you can call, the number is there. The WhatsApp number is below the page. You can see it down there. If you have any question before I drop the call, and the mushriks also, if they are available, please call me. Just call. Let me uh, put you to some little embarrassment a bit. Uh, Boni Abdullah says, Salam. Yeah, Salam, brother. You're welcome. Uh,
Somebody's asking a question. He says, Baba, why some Muslims look down on Tuba Muslims as if they, they aren't original Muslims? Uh, that is out of arrogance. And, well, those are sectarian Muslims. That's what sectarian Muslims do. They do, they try to look down on others, trying to say, oh, I'm here before you came. Who are you? It's just like the feeling of arrogance for them, a uh, pride to say, oh, I was born a Muslim. Like, don't lie to yourself. You are not born a Muslim. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have to grow up and, you know, search for the truth. Okay, I, I'm having my first caller. I guess I will take two callers before I drop the call. Yeah, yeah well, excellent, brother. Where your name, yeah. your name, and where are you calling from? Uh, my name is NSC. Oh, uh, NS, okay, NSC. Is it Nazir? NSC, yeah, yeah, NSC Nazir. Uh huh, okay. So you have two questions to go, brother. Yeah, my question is uh, I want to know what position should I face when I'm praying, and uh, how many, and then the second question is uh, how. How many days are we going to fast for the for, for the Ramadan? Because this is my first time. Uh, I want to practice uh, the true religion, uh, Allah they call me. Okay, good. Thank you for your question. Your first question is where will you face when you are praying? Throughout the Quran, throughout the Quran, there is no direction where God says if you are praying, listen carefully. If you are establishing salat, if you are praying, face Kaaba or Majid Lahai. He never ask you to do that. The sectarians, they quote, they misquote chapter 2, verse 144 out of context. It's not talking about Salat in that verse, right? Now, however, it, if it is God you are seeking for, God says in Quran chapter 2, verse 115, he says, Then he says, Then he says, Then he says, And to God belongs the East and the West. So he says, and so wherever you turn, then there will be the countenance of God or the, the face of God, the attention of God. You find it there. Then he says, indeed, God is what? Wasiun, encompassing and what? Omniscient. So what happens is, if it is God you are seeking for, which the Salat, we only establish to seek for God, right? For God. So if it is God you are seeking for, you can face anywhere to, to do your Salat. It doesn't matter where you are facing. That is the first answer to your question. Now, the second one, yes, the second one you are asking about uh, the, the days of uh, fasting. Ramadan. Yes. And you are asking how many days are we supposed to do what? To fast? Is that what you asked? Fast, yeah. The yeah. answer is found in Quran chapter 2, verse 184. It says, a yaman, a yaman do that. A limited number of days. Within a month, you can do a few days or a limited number of days. The reason is, from the time you spot the crescent moon, when we say shahar, shahar means new moon or month. And the word, the word uh, ahillat, it means crescent, mentioned in chapter 2, verse 189. Now, crescent, we have the waning crescent, waxing crescent and waning crescent. That is when the new moon comes like the letter C in the sky. As soon as you spot the C, uh, the new one, the waxing one for that particular month, that marks the beginning of the, your fasting days, right? So when you see yeah. that one, your fasting starts the next day. So far as you have spotted it, it starts the next day till you see the waning crescent, then that marks the ending of your siam in that particular month. However, in that month, if you cannot do all the days, this is what will happen. God says, for man can a minkum maridan, if you are sick, our Allah is suffering, or you are upon a journey, then he says, for it that to mean a yamin ukhar, then a number of other days, meaning if you are sick within the few days it started and you cannot do those few days, you wait when you get better, you do the other days in front of you. It doesn't say another month. Okay. It is not telling you to pay for a, 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 to compensate for a fasting. I will tell you why. I have a full lecture on this. Now, the reason is found in the same verse. I'm quoting chapter 2, verse 184. He says, Wa and those who will endure, meaning you will suffer, you can do it, but you will suffer. Then God says, ransom by feeding a poor person. You see, you ransom by feeding a poor person or poor people. 
So now, if I, if God has given me the chance to ransom for my day, day of fasting, how is it that now it will become compulsory on me to do fasting when I'm sick or I'm on a journey? Do you get my point? So meaning yeah, somebody who is sick is exempted. Somebody who is traveling is exempted. But if you can do it, but you struggle, then you can feed the poor person as a ransom. So whenever the word feed yet is used, as a ransom is used, meaning you use it to ransom, meaning you are not going to do the fasting, but you have used something in exchange of that because of uh, difficulty. So that answers your question. Yeah, thank you so much. You're welcome, brother. Yes, yeah. right. So the next caller before I end the program, if there's any other caller before I end. Uh, yeah, salam, brother Lamin Mohammed. You're welcome. Uh, uh, br brother Mohammed Gaddafi says, What is the importance of Imam? Do you say Imam or Iman? Because you wrote Iman. Or you meant imam. Imam means a leader. That's what it means, a leader. In the mosque, if you say what is the importance of a leader, we all know what a leader is supposed to serve us, right? Uh, Ibrahim Aruna says, Baba, going around the Kaaba seven times is prescribed by God. God never said you should go seven times. However, Going around the Kaaba, yes, it's no, no problem uh, about that. Quran chapter 22, verse 27 to 29. Yes, you can pay visit there. You can go around like, you know how people, when they go to museums, they go around and check places. and But it doesn't give you number that you have to do seven times. No, it's people uh, who put it there. Uh, Aisha Musa says, is, is the Qibla Mecca? Uh, I don't get the question right. Is the Qibla Mecca? Or are you trying to say is the Qibla in Mecca? If the question is, is the Qibla in Mecca? Because we have Masjid al Haram, that is the Qibla assigned to the messenger in Quran chapter 2, verse 143 to 144. That is the Masjid al Haram assigned to him as a Qibla. A Masjid al Haram. Yes, I know about that. I know people who are using their whims and desires to say it's not that because of this one video done by Dan Gibson or so. I know about the video. He used the hadith to prove his points. All I can disprove that with a blink of an eye. Quran chapter 48, verse 24 to verse 27 talks about the Masjid al-Haram, right? And talks about Mecca. So the Mecca... That is where the believers were based because God assigned the Masjid al-Haram to them. And Masjid al-Haram is located there. And then the Kaaba is located in the same place there. Right? So Masjid al-Haram is around the Kaaba. But some people will try to tell you, oh, uh, the Kaaba or Masjid al-Haram is based in Petra. We have old archives. We have old videos, which goes back in time to show you that the Kaaba still existed long before. It is not as if Somebody will just do a documentary and use Hadith uh, references and then say, oh, look, this mosque is facing here. That mosque is facing there. That cannot be taken as an evidence. So I'll be willing to have a discussion, a dialogue with these people who have these views saying that Mecca or, or Majid al-Haram or Kaaba is based in Petra. I would love to have a discussion with them. Yes, I'm aware of some people saying it's based in Jerusalem. They have no proof whatsoever from the Quran. It doesn't say so in the Quran. Again, uh, Amda, Amda Yelsida says, is Gusl in the Quran? Yes, Quran chapter 5, verse 6. Uh, ya you are Lazina Amanu Isa Kuntum Ila Salat, Fabusuluhum Uju Akum, Waidiakum Ila Marafik, Womso, Birusukum, Warjulakum Ila Kabin. So Gusl can be found. When we say Gusl is to wash, right? And some people will target as what? Ablution, right? Uh -huh. So you wash, ablution is in the Quran. I have a video on my YouTube channel. I can share it later on when I finish with this program and people can get. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's late here. You're welcome, Sister uh, Aisha. Uh, 
my time is up. I need to go for my salat. It's getting late. It's getting dark. Uh, I think I'll drop the topic here. I'm getting exhausted. No caller. One caller so far, and it's good. I've answered enough questions. Uh, you are welcome, Ibrahim uh, Haruna. Thank you for your time. And I think this is where we drop the topic for today. Uh, Vora Vora says what? Uh, Vora Vora, no mushiruk will come here. People like Uti Dawa are waiting to pick your video to critic. <laughs> uh, let them keep wasting their time taking my video. And they cannot face me. I keep telling you. I keep telling them, come for a live dialogue. They are running like zebras away from the live. You see? So let them keep wasting their time. I only call them for a di live dialogue. And the people can see who is telling the truth and who is telling the lies. So leave them with their own lies to keep lying to their audience. So ladies and gentlemen, this is where I broke the topic for now. Subhana Rabbi Izzati Amma Isifun wa salamu ala al-mursaleen wa alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. And next week, God willing, I'll be doing a topic to explain chapter 16, verse 44 of the Quran and chapter 5, verse 3 to verse 4 of the Quran. So before I end, I play for you a video here. He says, Waman Yashu and Vikri Rahman. Listen, so you can understand where the problems come, where do they start from? He said, Waman Yashu and Vikri Rahman. Anyone who neglects the word of Allah, Vikri Rahman, here in Quran, anyone who neglects it, anyone who keeps it behind his back, anyone who turns away from it. Yani, this could be a Muslim, it could be a non Muslim, it could be anyone. Anyone who thought himself too high from the Quran could be the Muslim. The one that we say to him, read the Quran, ya akhi, it's got your solution for every problem. He says, I know, but give me something else. That same person is Waman Yashu and Dikr Rahman. The one who decides not to hold on to this Quran. Uh, if you did not hold on to that, Allah Azza wa Jal, he says, Nuqayyid lahu shaytan fahuwa lahu qareen. Nuqayyid, we're going to appoint a shaytan for him. And that shaytan is going to be lahu qareen, is going to be his best friend. He becomes his best friend. Then you need to understand, my brothers and sisters, there are two paths. Either the path of Dhikr Rahman, the path of the Quran, and you choose to hold on to that for life, and you have a daily relationship with this Quran. And if not, the only other path that exists is the path of the Shaytan, as Allah Azza wa Jal mentions in this ayah. If you abandon and neglect this and had it behind your back, and gave it no importance and significance in your life, didn't try, didn't bother to read, didn't bother to memorize, you did not bother to ponder over it, you did not bother to learn how to read so you can start to read this Quran, then that means you abandoned, you neglected what Allah Azza wa Jal says in the other part, and we're going to appoint a shaytan for him, فَهُوَ لَهُ قَرِيرٌ and that shaytan will be his best friend. وَإِنَّهُمْ لَيَصُدُّونَهُمْ عَنِ السَّبِيلِ and that shaytan would keep misguiding him and diverting him from the correct path. Path. And you know where the big worrying part is? This is the worrying part. And those same people would assume they're guided. And they would have this feeling that now we're on the right path. We're walking correctly. And this is the worst disaster and calamity that could ever happen to anyone. He is misguided and he reckons and he assumes that he's guided. How does he do that? Abandon the Quran. And that is exactly what the result is.